I'm glad that the look wasn't in vain. I'm glad he found me. Aren't you? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Mom. I thought I was through with uh, what I spoke to you about Sunday night, but the Lord's just let me know I'm not through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to move on just a little bit with it. How many of you know what Philippians 4 and 13 says? I read it to you Sunday night. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's exactly right. You can do anything you need to do through Jesus Christ when you allow Him to be your strength. He is your segue, amen, to victory. But tonight I want to go to the book of 1 Timothy in chapter 1. Bless your word. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Bless your word. Speak to us. Speak to my heart. First Timothy chapter one, we'll go to verse twelve. The Bible reads this way First Timothy chapter one and verse twelve. Apostle Paul writing. He says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, a, pro- a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Now listen, here it is. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting. You may be seated. I want to take my thought, amen, as the Lord helps me tonight, because I sure didn't study this. It says, the Apostle Paul, he said that Jesus, that first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, that He be a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting tonight for just a few moments let's talk about being that pattern being that pattern I spoke to you Sunday night as the Lord you know I told you the Lord just changed my mind right before I took the pulpit and we preached about uh, the battle to keep our head above water And we preached about how that we've got to have a fight within us. That we've got, amen, to fight and resist the enemy. We have got to uh, make ourselves be cognizant of the fact that we're not going to do this thing just because we wish it. It's going to have to be our will to praise and and to to live, to, to serve Jesus Christ the Lord. You have to have a purpose. In serving the Lord Jesus Christ. There has to be a purpose in your heart and your life. Where you purpose to do something. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. And along the pattern of serving Jesus Christ. We understand that it comes with its trials. It comes with its troubles. It comes with the high points. And it comes with the low points. We all have those hills and valleys that we go through. 
But I want you to understand that is a part of life. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or you're not. You're going to have peaks and valleys in your life. There's going to be times when you feel like life's high. And there's going to be times when you feel like life is low. The benefit of being born again is that Jesus is with you through the highs and the lows. Amen? He's your comfort and your help. And so what we have to learn is to be able to maintain, amen, that level of expectancy of ourselves, amen, that we're going to be consistent in the faith for Jesus Christ the Lord, that we're going to be consistent, amen, to worship Him, amen, to live for Him, to let our light shine for Him, amen. Our life is not going to be like a wind of shade. We're in, we're out, we're up, we're down, but no. Amen. We're going to be consistent for Jesus Christ the Lord. And I read to you tonight the importance of us having a consistency in our life. It is that the Lord, because of His mercy and His grace and His choosing of you and I. He chose you and I. I didn't choose Him. He chose me. Right? I didn't convict Him. He convicted me. I didn't die for Him. He died for me. Alright? Amen. This is all from His side. I didn't do anything to merit the favor of God. I didn't do anything to merit, amen, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ the Lord. If I did anything, I contributed to His death. Amen. But He contributed to my life. My coming out of the darkness. My coming out of sin. My being impaled. Amen. By the power of darkness. I want you to understand tonight. This is all a Jesus thing because He loves us so much. And there's a lot of times that we get in our minds that, well, because He loves us so much that we don't have to do anything. But I beg to differ tonight. You've got a responsibility tonight as a child of God. Amen. To live a fervent life for Jesus Christ. So Lord, what do you mean? You've got to keep fire burning. For Jesus Christ. You've got to let the flame of the gospel, amen, not be quenched in your life. Keep that oil coming. Come on. I submit to you tonight, the importance of it is this. is because the Apostle Paul saying, The Lord did everything He did for me for two reasons. First of all, that I might inherit eternal life. And second of all, that I can show somebody else the way. Now come on. Woo! Jesus didn't save you, amen, just for you to go on your merry little way and do your own little thing and be your own little person. Jesus Christ adopted you into the bloodline, amen, of the glory of God, amen, so that you could touch and affect other people for Jesus Christ, so that you could share, amen, the unmerited favor of God, so that you could testify of the love of God, so you you can look at somebody and say, just let me tell you what Jesus did for me. I was lost. I was undone. I was a dreadful sinner. But He took a dark heart. Amen. And washed it and made it white as snow. I don't know how blood makes a dark heart white. Amen. But He did it. Amen. He changed our lives. And because He invested His life into my life, I got to invest my life in your life. So I want to tell you tonight, that's why it's important, amen, that we worship. Because that worship tends, amen, to develop a pattern in our life. This is not just abstract art. There's nothing about the gospel that is abstract. There's nothing about, amen, our life in Christ that is abstract. It is very scriptural by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're not doing anything by accident. We're doing it by godly design. We're doing it because we're led of the Spirit of God to prove what is that good and acceptable and holy will of God in our lives. And so tonight, 
Amen. Christ is calling us as He called the Apostle Paul. He called him to the ministry. Yes, he was an apostle. Yes. Amen. He was one that was sent by the Spirit of God. That's what apostle means, to be sent. But yet, he called him to the ministry. I want you to understand tonight that you've been called to the ministry. You might not have been called to preach. Amen. But you've been called to testify. You've been called to witness. You've been called, amen, to lay that pattern out. Amen. To show somebody there's a way to Calvary from where they are. How'd I get to Calvary? Amen. All I know, amen, I was a lost sinner boy. Amen. Heard about Jesus. Knew about Jesus. Amen. When I was lost, I probably knew as much about the Lord as most say, folks. Raised in church. Taught the Scriptures. Knew the Word of God. Knows what it, know, knew what it said. But just didn't abide by it. But what I want you to understand, amen, there happened to come a day, amen, when heaven came down and glory filled my soul. The David that went down wasn't the David that come up. I went down heavy laden and burdened with sin. But when I came up, I was free. I was free. What about you? Amen. There were no chains binding me. Amen. The devil didn't have a hold on me. I came up free. Why? Because Jesus broke the yoke in my life. Amen. I saw godly people that were living for the Lord. And I knew because they did it, I can do it. You see, in my life, I've never forgotten. Amen. The Luther Inman's. <laughs> he might not have been, hey man, a shouter, but he was rock solid. He was a rock solid man of God. Hey man, who kept the faith. I haven't forgotten the Sally Stanleys. Hey man, that was eat up with arthritis. But every Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night, hey man, she'd walk from that real hill, walk down through the railroad tracks, through the ditch, over the tracks, and back up the other side. Hey man, and find herself on the second row. My God, hey man, we got nice automobiles and we can't get to church. Amen. But she got to church because why? Because she had a desire to be in the house of God. I hadn't forgot the Flossie Larimores. I hadn't forgot the Hazel Williamsons. Amen. Hallelujah. I hadn't forgot the sacrifices that they made. Amen. To show me. Amen. That I can make it. To show me that even though their life amen, got turned upside down by misfortune, the the Lord was still, amen, their stay. The Lord was still their linchpin. And regardless of what life did to them, they were going to serve God. And when the Spirit moved, they were the first ones to jump up. Amen. And be exhorters in the name of Jesus Christ. I remember the Evelyn Hughes that nobody hardly ever thinks about. But they made an impact on a sinner boy. Why? Because they laid a pattern down. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. Show us, Lord. Yes, Lord. They put a pattern out there. Amen. A pattern that covered adverse terrain. A pattern that covered hardships. A pattern that covered disappointments. A, a pattern that said, yeah, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. A pattern that said, it don't matter what you do, do devil. You're not going to change my mind. Amen. I invested in Jesus and He's invested in me. Amen. And I'm growing with Him. And one day I'm going home with Him. They've gone on to meet their heavenly reward. Amen. I'm still striving for mine. But God, help me be a pattern. Help me to be somebody. Amen. That can lay the way out for others to find Jesus Christ the Lord. You see, so many times we're taken with ourselves. We're so consumed with ourselves. We won't worship if we don't like if the right people ain't on the platform. Come on, come on, It's true. 
We won't worship because of personality clashes. Sit right there and won't lift a finger for Jesus Christ the Lord. But you let somebody we like get up there, we'll tear the place apart. You know what that is? Hypocrisy. What would you say, preacher? Yeah, hypocrite. That's exactly right. What are you saying, preacher? I, I, I'm telling you tonight. Amen. That this worship that the Lord has called us to is not conditional upon personalities. Y'all didn't say nothing. And y'all must not be liking it. It's not conditional. It's not my job to judge anybody. And neither is it yours. Oh, there's people that, that do things that I don't approve of. But that's going to be between them and God. Jesus died for them. But it shouldn't stop me from worshiping Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. I'll reason with you. I'll reason with you. Just because I'm a nice guy. If we are personality driven in our worship, then what happens if there's continually everywhere we go personalities that we clash with, we're going to sit right there and we're going to act like we've took a spoonful of alum and it's going to draw our face and our lips up. And we're going to sit right there and we ain't going to do nothing. And our Holy Ghost filled self so proud of who we are because we just a little bit better than everybody else. Going to backslide right there on the pew because we didn't know the difference. I want you to understand, God works this way. Amen. It don't matter who gets up there. If it ain't a God, if the saints of God begin to worship God, does God will shut Him down. Right. Don't you believe that? Don't you believe the Holy Ghost will shut down that which is not of Him? When the church stands up, when the church does what right, when the church acknowledges Jesus Christ and begins to worship Him, the devil can't dance on the Lord's ground unless we surrender it to Him. This is the kind of preaching that gets you fired. Y'all be looking for another preacher for too long. I want you to understand tonight. Hey man, that we've got to be those people that are willing, that have the gumption, that have the capacity. Hey man, that have the fortitude in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Hey man, to stand up and say, you know what, Lord? I see what the devil's doing, but let me show the devil what I'm going to do. And it ain't going to be sit here. Lord, I'm going to lift my hands and I'm going to start praising You and I'm going to start worshiping You. And I'm just going to thank You for who You are in my life. I'm not worried about anything else anybody else doing, Lord. I just want You to know, Amen, I know You're a King of kings and the Lord of lords. I know You're not a God of confusion. So Lord, I just want to praise You because You're going to do the right thing. You see, what's happened in the house of God for too long is that we've wanted not to hurt somebody's feelings even when they're absolutely wrong. I'm going to tell you what, people can go to heaven with hurt feelings. But they can't go to heaven wrong. You think about this. I don't... I don't want to make nobody mad. Now please don't think I'm just saying it don't bother me if it make if I know I make somebody mad. It bothers me. It does. It gnaws at me like a cancer. But it's a price. If I'm preaching and I'm preaching the word of God and I'm standing strong on the foundation of God and it makes you mad, that's between you and God. That ain't between me and you. Right. Now, if I get on my own soapbox and I get to preaching the will of David, then that's a problem between me and you. You got every right. But I want you to understand tonight 
that God has called us to more than just profession. It would have been easy for Paul, Saul, Paul. It would have been easy for him to say, Lord, I can't go in there. You know how I, I killed some of them people. I killed some of their family. I, 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 I was treacherous to some of their family. I can't go in there. But God changed him so much. God changed his heart so much that he was able to walk right back in where he had done devastation and bring healing. Hey, I've apologized to people right from that pulpit that I did wrong when I was a sinner. They'd be sitting right here in this church and I'd see them and God would bring it back to my mind and say, boy, you was rough on them when you won't right. And I'd apologize to them. Why? Because I didn't want them to leave my pattern in the package. I want them to know that the Lord has genuinely changed my life. Well, I'm not that person anymore. I don't, I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to resurrect that person anymore. I don't even want to laugh about what that person used to do. That's, you know, that's what center pe- uh, Christian people do a lot. Boy, they, they relish in their sinner days. They think about how what they used to do in sin and just laugh and cackle and have a good time and seeing what they did in sin. But we're not glorifying God. We're edifying, we're edifying God. Our nature. We're edifying sin. What's dead's dead, friend. Right? I don't need to rehearse to you all the things I did in sin. All you need to know is I was a dirty, rotten scoundrel. Period. And I needed Jesus. And Jesus came to my rescue. I'd rather tell you about what Jesus has done for me. What He's been to me. How He's helped me. Y'all should be standing up or on your knees one to two. Amen. Just thanking God. But here we are right here. Amen. I I want you to understand tonight. There's more to this thing. Amen. Than just sitting here. Yeah, I'm saved. And I'm satisfied too. I'm satisfied with right where I'm at. Where's the hunger? Where's the hunger? Where's the desire for Jesus Christ the Lord? Where's the passion to worship Jesus? That's what makes the pattern effective. That's what makes the pattern effective. My mama was a seamstress. She could sew anything she wanted to sew. She could make anything she wanted to make. I watched her many days sit at that sewing machine and she had a steady line of traffic of, of women coming in wanting clothes made, alterations. There was time when she made our clothes. I thank God when we started buying from J.C. Penney. <laughs> but she'd come in. She'd make, we'd make wedding dresses. She'd make anything you want her to make. But I've seen many days Mama take that board, that cutting board I reckon, what they call it, and she'd lay it out on the bed and she'd lay a pattern out. And she'd take those shears, them crooked ones that cut crookeds, and she'd cut. She'd cut that pattern. And she'd piece that thing together and make that thing together. What she had to begin with was just a lump of cloth. Come on. A piece of cloth. And then when she cut it up in different pieces, she just had a bunch of pieces. She had to know which pieces went with what. I'd have probably had it looking, Lord, like a hodgepodge. Like somebody threw up on it. But she'd sit there and sew and she'd be singing, acting like she was just so happy. Happy as she could be. And I remember she'd be listening to the radio. She'd listen to back to the Bible and J. Vernon McGee. And she'd listen to all these people. And she'd just be just as happy as she could be there. Just sewing. But after a while, all those pieces became a garment. All those pieces, they were put together. And they became something 
that was an outfit that someone could wear. They'd come over and then she would, they'd put it on and then she'd do the alterations to it. You know, whether she had to tighten it up, loosen it up, shorten it up, lengthen it or whatever she had to do. She would do it and then they'd walk out with their outfit. What I'm telling you is this, is that Jesus is using your life as a pattern. And He takes all these pieces and He knows how to fit those pieces together. But we've got to be willing to allow those shears to go through our life and, and, and cut our life. And cut us in the right pieces so that we can be that ministry. Amen to the people. We don't know, we don't know who we're going to be a covering for. You don't know who you're going to be. Amen. You're going to meet. Who's going to come across your path. Amen. That's going to need you. Amen. To be an influence on them. So it's important that we stick to the pattern. Amen. The pattern of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why it is so important. I go back. It's why it's so important for you. Amen. To fight with everything you got against the enemy. Amen. Keep your head above water. Amen. To keep your fight. To keep your battle cry. To keep your victory. Amen. Man, if you ain't got no victory, how are you going to help somebody find the victory? If you always moaning and groaning, how are you going to help somebody find peace? How are you going to help somebody find joy? If we're always talking about what's wrong with us, dear God, how are we going to encourage somebody that there's hope in Jesus Christ the Lord? Have you ever talked to somebody and you felt worse after you talked to them? That's the way it is with a lot of Christians. We talk more about what's wrong than we do what's right. I'm not talking about denial. I know you got problems in your life. I know you got circumstances in your life. Amen. But there comes a time when we just got to look around and say, but you know what? The best thing that I can tell you that ever happened to me is that Jesus saved my soul. The Bible says heaven and earth going to pass away, but His Word won't pass away. Guess where His Word is? His Word is engraved, amen, on my soul. His Word is engraved on my heart. He abides with me. Let me tell you something. This whole body going to go back to the dust of the earth, but right here my soul's going to ascend to the heavens. Why? Because of Jesus. And that's what people need to know. It's because of Jesus. Why can I smile when everything's going wrong? Why can I have peace when I should be in absolute turmoil? Why should I not be worrying when everybody else is worried? Because I serve the man who holds it all in his hand. Look, what has he promised? You know what the Lord promised? One of the most powerful promises that the Lord has made in the Word of God to you and I is this, that He'll keep us. Boy, that went over like a ton of bricks, didn't it? Y'all just looking at me like so. And He said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. He said, it don't matter what your enemy devises to your demise, it's going to fail. Why? Because I'm your shield and your buckler. Because I'm your everything. Because I am the Lord God of heaven and there is no one like me. And you're mine. I paid for you. I paid the ultimate price for you. And I'm not going to sacrifice you to the enemy. I'm going to keep you with extreme prejudice. Hallelujah. That's exactly how I feel. I feel like just having a good Holy Ghost fit. Amen. Why? Because He's going to keep me regardless of what anybody says. I'm His. Through the 
My God. Man, y'all ought to be praising God about right now. Amen. Somebody need to tell the enemy I'm his. I belong to Jesus. He's mine. My God, my healer, my deliverer, and best of all, my soon coming king. I'm going to be out of this place for too long. Help us right here, Holy Ghost. Help us right here, Holy Ghost. Remind us, Lord. Amen. That if we'll just be the pattern, amen, you'll do what needs to be done with our lives. That's why I can shout hallelujah. That's why I can say glory to God. That's why I can say I love you, Jesus. Because I know that I know that I know that He's my everything. Is He your everything tonight? Somebody stand to your feet and lift up your hands. Amen. And just thank Him for being your everything. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm not talking about a token praise. I'm not talking about appeasing the preacher. Amen. I'm talking about reach way down and give God a big praise tonight for being your keeper. I got a battle cry and I'm going to use it. Hallelujah. 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 He's given me the power. Amen. And I'm going to allow that power to work through my life. No weapon. No weapon. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel it in my spirit tonight. Amen, somebody. Amen, just need somebody to bless them. Reach over to your neighbor tonight. Amen, reach over to somebody tonight and say, Lord, amen, help them to be a pattern. Help them to be a pattern, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give them the power to be a pattern. Hallelujah for Jesus. Oh, I feel the presence of God in this place tonight. Hallelujah. You can do this. Amen. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. You can be everything. Hallelujah. The Lord needs you to be tonight. You can do it all through Christ Jesus tonight. Oh, thank God. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Help me right now, Jesus. Help me right now, Jesus. Put me on the cotton board, Lord. Amen. I want to be that pattern. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. What did you say a while ago? You said, I'm not. I'm not surrendering. I'm not surrendering. I won't do it. Come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell him. Hallelujah. Tell him. I'm not giving up. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not giving up. I'm not going to give you the gratification of seeing me fall. Amen. The only way He's going to see me fall is when I fall at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And crown Him King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. I'm not giving up. I'm going to be a pattern for Christ. I'm going to be an example for Christ. I'm going to let people see the love of God in me. I'm going to let people see, amen, the Spirit of the Lord in me. 
I'm not going to hide what God's doing in my life. I'm not going to hold back, amen, what God's doing in my life. Amen. If I want to yell hallelujah in food line, God help me to holler hallelujah. Amen. The drunkard's not ashamed of his drunkenness. The drug user's not ashamed of their drug usage. The homosexual's not ashamed of their effeminates. Why should I be ashamed of what Jesus has done in me? My God! If the devil's crowd ain't going to be ashamed of what they're doing, uh, why should I? Amen. Put it on the big screen. I, I want them to know who I stand for. I stand for Jesus. What about you? Who are you standing for tonight? Glory to God. You know what? If Jesse was here tonight, you know what he'd be doing? Jesus! You better believe it. What are you doing? What are you doing? With your opportunity to worship. With your opportunity to praise. What are you doing? Huh? Where's your battle cry? When's the last time? Hey man, you've used your battle cry. When's the last time you reminded the enemy? Hey man, there's no need in me fearing you. Because the Lord didn't give me the spirit of fear. Amen. He gave me the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Devil, you come too late. Amen. His name's Jesus. He's already done it for me. Hallelujah. You're going to feel the hammer. Amen. Of the justice of God. My God. Oh, let's everybody come on to the front and worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. God help us. Enable us to be that pattern. Come on. Amen. Step on out. Come on. Let's get in the altar tonight and worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah.